Watch your back. Won't work. The pack leader's mind clamps onto yours. You see yourself through her eyes, a pulsing red cluster of organs. Feast! No, the voice has forbidden this meat. Nor see your whole world as a meal. This voice is acting as a leash, but it won't hold them for long. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority.
Deep in the chaos of her mind, something responds to your command. A tadpole. It is the source of the voice. She will obey it. She will obey you. A shiver runs across your mind. You feel sated. survivors wasn't enough to satisfy her. Sensing your presence, the Knoll's tadpole writhes in air. Its host will feast on Knoll flesh to control the hunger. flesh of her pack wasn't enough to satisfy her. in her throat, feel it pooling in the cavity of her skull, but she still resists. Your tadpole wriggles, contented. She tears out her own throat. There's an illithid parasite in that corpse. You should take a look. All's well that ends. Oh, not as bad as it could have.
Well, then. Are you sure? The bl And just when things were warming up. Come on, then. Don't leave me in suspense. How are you feeling? No errant tentacles? No sudden cravings for a more cerebral diet? Complete with ribaldry as always. Well, you could provide no better proof that you are not, in fact, about to turn into a mind flare. Famously humorless, Elithids. The tyrannical enslavement of all other living creatures hardly lends itself to levity. Should your wit begin to suffer, only then must we worry. Was there another matter you wish to discuss? I know what it is to hunger. And I know what it takes to keep that hunger under control. He's done that so far, despite his condition. So long as he sates his appetite elsewhere, I'm happy to give him the benefit of the doubt. With pleasure, lead on. Salutations. Looking ahead. How can I help? I question the wisdom of that decision, but so be it. I'll be here in the... Soldier. Oh, come on. You don't mean that. Oh, fine. I'll be here eating dirt or whatever. Speak. Mark my words. This power would be no blessing, but a curse. You might as well ask me to gouge out my eyes for the promise of sight, or slice off my tongue for the promise of taste. Consume all the gate tadpoles you wish. I'm not so craven. And when the tadpole has stretched to every pore and slithered through every vein, what then? It won't hear my screams. It won't care if I beg. I will be remade in its image. My faith in Vlakith will guide me, and my own might will sustain me. 
I have no need of this depraved power. It is done. Something the matter? All right. Some company wouldn't hurt on the road, especially if there's trouble. There is work to do. a lot on my mind and well, in it hmm. Enough waiting. I crave blood. She's coming. Will, you've been naughty. And you know what happens when you're naughty. 
gods damn it. Anyone but her. Handlers, the word. If it's all the same. My pup here's been unruly. And his leash needs a yank. We had a deal, Will. But Carlac's still breathing. I've taken more pleasant shits than you, Mizora. And at least those can be buried after. That's no kind of talk for a lady. By the way, Carlac, Zariel sends her regards. You told me! Devils only! She's a tiefling, not a monster! How precious. The little pupster's found his bark. Clause G, Section 9. Target shall be limited to the infernal, the demonic, the heartless, and the soulless. Karlak meets the criteria by virtue of having no heart. The point? Oh, yes. Thanks for the reminder. Will burns in the fires of Avernus. The lightning storms of Dis strike his flesh. His soul passes through each layer of the hells, gaining their essence and their torment. have you done? The promise broken, a price paid. You know the terms. Get used to the new form, pet. There's no going back. Some magic even I can't undo. Now, let's see how the frontiers fare without their precious blade. Karlak, keep an eye on him, would you? I'll be keeping mine on you. And Will, don't forget, our pact still stands. Ta-ta. There you are, my friend. <laughs> Are you now? <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep, darling. <laughs> Thankfully, I've had my needs met this evening. I found a bear. He took a little of my blood. I took all of his. You're comparing plonk to vintage wine. You can make merry with either, but they're not the same. But Cazador fed me rats and bugs. And when you're used to drinking from a sewer, even Plonk is a marked improvement. I existed. That was enough for him. He reveled in having power over me. Because those with power can do whatever the hell they want. <laughs> Indeed they are. And now that I can walk in the sun, <laughs> well, that opens all manner of doors. It could open some coffins, too. <laughs> no. These tadpoles are a gift I intend to use to the fullest. Hello, sorry for bothering you. you. I want to offer promotion of your channel, viewers, followers, views, chatbots, etc. The price is lower th.
Something the matter? You've already pestered me with your notions once today. If I have something to add, I'll tell you. God's damn her straight back to the hells. Just look at me. I did what was right, and Mazora made me pay for it. I'd be hunting devils and demons, she said. Traitors and hypocrites, heartless evils of all sorts, but not... Not Zariel's victims. Not innocent tieflings. I'd count my lucky stars for it, but I reckon luck is on holiday. I'm only alive because my patron still has use for me. It's Mazora who grants me the power to conjure armor and cast eldritch blasts. Before I was infected, I could even call hell beasts and summon festering clouds. But I promise you, every thrust of my blade and every flame I sparked was for the good of the coast. A possibility that's kept me awake countless nights. But I don't have a clue where to start, other than play her games and play by the rules. That's the only language devils listen to. She could kill me for one, and that's not the worst of it. My contract is very clear. I can bring Mazora no harm. She'll have to let me out of my pact willingly. The only way out is if I can out-bargain her. We're standing here with nothing but the clothes on our backs and the worms in our heads. We can, I'm sure of it. How glad I am that you see me as more than my patron's pet. Go ahead, I'm listening. Ah, yes, Carsus. Carsus was perhaps the most powerful wizard that ever lived. The child who would be a god, the elves called him. And he tried. With a spell of his own devising, he endeavored to usurp in one fell swoop the power of the goddess of magic. Mistril, she was called then. Imagine what it must have felt like to be a god. To know yourself, to be untouchable. To be mistaken. As Carsus aimed his spell at her, she began to unravel. And with her, the entire weave. Too late did he realize what he had unleashed. It would have been the end of everything had not Mistril sacrificed herself. The goddess of magic is all magic. By dying, the entire weave was lost, and the spell that challenged a god failed. It was the end of Mistral, the end of Carsus, and the end of an entire civilization. As the child who would be a god was turned to stone, his empire came crashing down around him. The floating cities of Netheril were no more, an event that came to be known as Carsus's folly. For a spell, Mistral was reborn as Mistra. Upon her return, the weave returned with her. Now, so many centuries later, I try to follow in the footsteps of Carsus, not to destroy Mistra, 
to prove my love for her. I tried to control only a fraction of the magic that was unleashed that fateful day. I merely sought to return one tiny diamond to an imperfect crown. Gale's folly, one might call it. History, repetition. It's the way things go. If it should ever come to that, if I ever know I am no longer able to stop it, I will do anything I can to ensure no one but me pays for my mistakes. I will find the remotest place on the surface of Faerun, or perhaps far below in the depths of the Underdark. I will await that death alone. I promise I will not betray your trust. You kept me by your side despite the menace that I am. If worse comes to worst, I will be long gone before the curtain falls. I'll be honest, soldier. I'm reeling. Will hardly knows me, but he chose my life over his. <sighs> Been a long time since someone stuck their neck out for me like that. Wouldn't be courage without the risk, would it? I'll figure out a way to make it up to him. What are heroes like? Swords? Shields? Shiny things? Goblins are such vile little parasites. Given your own nature, are you really the one to judge? Shadow Heart. Such a grim name for such a beautiful flower. Could you not stare so blatantly in my neck when you say that, please? Oh, but do keep calling her flower. She'll love that. Has 
Dear Luna, as if mingling with a horde of goblins wasn't bad enough. Let's do what we have to do, then get out of here. Good. Saluna is a bad omen. Just look what's befallen her temple. Though, I'll grant it must have been impressive once, in all its profane glory. I wonder what happened. No matter. I'll breathe easier once we're clear of this place. We don't have time for this. Besides, I already explained myself. Is your hearing failing you? Or your wits, perhaps? There's nothing more to say. Let's move. That the jingle of coin I hear? You've timed it well, my friend. Already turned quite the profit today. So I'm feeling generous. Aye, so you have. There's one place the Zentarim can trade openly, thank the gods. Folk up here like to quiver over right and wrong. Until the coin starts clinking, anyway. It's just business. If there was money in being good, the Zentarim would be pure as paladins. Pleasure. Need something? Pleasure.
us a right. Don't go bothering my pigeon. He's mine. Um, Peach. Keep him safe. Look what's it to ya? Then catch one as the symbol glows. Power courses through you. Authority. This Ranga better not go yapping about my pigeon. I should have turned him over to Mindora by now, but he's such a nice little pigeon. What? Oh, oh, I ain't. Mindora don't give a cake what you think. Bah, just take him if you care so much. See if he'll sing for the likes of you, though. Nutty think. Here's the key. Pigeon's all yours. Timely intervention. What to do? <laughs> Look at this! A body has been discovered. You're accused of being the cause of death. The price of freedom runs higher than you thought. A prison cell beckons. Try something else. Yes, my friend? I was just settling in and reviewing my latest findings. Mind flares, cultists, and, of course, your esteemed company. <laughs> Finding is my job, my friend. If there's anything in the world worth knowing, I assure you, I do. Why, I'm practically an expert. They've tentacles, you know? Quite shocking. The druid Halson had some kind of mind flare specimen in a jar in his quarters. A replica, no doubt, but truly fascinating to see up close. As a matter of fact, I do. But why do you? That... that can't be. You're either an excellent storyteller, or you've experienced something quite exceptional. Hmm. Tell me, have you noticed any residual psionic malaise since the alleged encounter? Curious. Elithids, their technical name, form a hive mind. One shouldn't be able to hear their dark whispers. Unless... That's quite impossible. You'd have undergone ceramorphosis by now. I can't attest to the specifics, but I do know that not long after insertion, the host, that's you, turns into a mind flayer. As there's not a tentacle on your head, 
I can only assume you haven't been infected. If what you say were true, you'd be a mind flayer by now. You? Infected by a mind flayer? <laughs> Ridiculous. Isn't it? Perhaps that's for the best. I'd be irresponsible not to debunk such a strange claim. If I just peer in your eye, I could quickly... Oh, my dear sweet God! If we managed it, we'd have a specimen of incredible rarity on our hands. I'll need to research the particulars, however. Give me a bit of time, and I'll have this little issue sorted. A scrying eye. Best not do anything suspicious while it's watching. What are we waiting for? Spears are sharp. The lads are all riled up and ready. You have all... Your scouting party has not returned. And half of the intruders escaped your guards. Sorry, mistress. We mucked up. Until their sanctuary is found. I will take something precious from you every hour that passes. A trinket, a tongue, a limb. I ain't no use without my limbs. The lads will make the prisoner squeal soon enough. I swear! Silence now, creature. Or I will silence you forever. As she turns to you, her thoughts mingle with yours. A cold hand caressing your brain. The chamber melts away to reveal a dark, endless nowhere. In it, you see a vision. The drow listens as a pale-eyed young woman whispers in her ear. One of those the voice spoke of. One of the chosen. The vision fades away. A true soul? Praise be. Are you here to join my hunt? Interesting. What do you know of this druid? If you were sent here to hunt him, Perhaps you can help me. The druid makes his home in a nearby sanctuary where his followers worship a false god. I intend to find it and destroy it. There is a weapon the Absolute seeks. I'm sure those wretches have it hidden away there. We will find it amongst the dead and the ashes. Her excitement is palpable. 
She lingers on thoughts of victory, of unbelievers' blood spilled, and of the weapon. She will seize it in the Absolute's name. You feel Shadowheart's anxiety. The weapon the Absolute seeks, it's the artifact that she carries. The same one that protected you as you entered the Goblin camp. Her mind focuses. The cultists cannot discover that the weapon they seek is within their grasp. She is seeking the grove you visited. Already you feel her mind closing around yours. My patience wears thin, true soul. The hunt must begin. I would expect nothing less. Together, we shall burn it to the ground. And when we destroy the trappings of this false god, the Absolute will reward us with such power. The last I sent did not return. Dead at the hands of those they seek, no doubt. I would take greater pleasure in killing them myself than in sending them to die. And the occasional mass execution does wonders for discipline. One, we captured a human who knows exactly where it is. He's been resilient, but he'll talk. Excellent. Be sure not to kill him before he talks. No prizes for guessing the village what this to the east. weapon they're it's after abandoned. really is. Looks that way. But the scouts artifact. said they heard something moving around out there. Something big. It's not our concern. Our prey is elsewhere. <laughs> Pariahs to carry the powder kegs. These pariahs, they're prepared for 